We continue to look ahead to the 2024 college football season. Our stop today is Mitchell, South Dakota, as we get to visit with the new head football coach for the Dakota Wesleyan Tigers, Coach Alex Kretschmar. Coach, thank you very much for being with us today here on the Summit First. And you were named as the new head coach on February 13th. Now, one of the things that stands out to me about that, it's six days after signing day. I know you were part of the signing process as well, but you take over for Coach Ross Simple, who is now the athletic director as well. Talk about the, the new gig and, and what that means to you. Uh, well, you know, I'm very, very fortunate and like feel very privileged and honored to, uh, that Coach Simple afforded me that opportunity. President Kittle, um, president of the university, um, it was, you know, definitely not something that I was necessarily when we started the second semester really thinking. I mean, Coach Simple, he took over as interim AD back in December when our uh, AD at the time left. Um, to go take a new position and kind of, we always thought that like, all right, Abe, this is more temporary. And, you know, he's kind of making, you know, keeping everything going forward until we can get the full-time guy in there. And then it just kind of naturally progressed to that. And then he had asked me, it was a little bit before saying like, Oh, is there any chance you might be interested in this? And I said, well, you know, yeah, let's go. I'm ready. I'm, you know, you're still going to be my boss. So I'm excited. Uh, but it was, it was a good, good deal. I'm very, feel very fortunate and uh the guys you know there's obviously at least in the beginning it was a surprise for them um but I think they all kind of said all right yep this is what it is we're we're going to go forward and get to work those are the best transitions the smooth transitions like what you're describing right there so I'm, I'm glad to hear that for you coach I you know I mentioned signing day and it's spring still at least mm -hmm. on the calendar and you look back to a day like that, obviously you've been with the program for a little while too. So you were a part of the recruiting process. Talk a little bit about this class that's coming in. Uh, we're really excited about this class. Uh, on signing day, we had 27. Um, now we've gotten to about 37 total. Um, so we got, you know, it's, uh, it's 20 on the defensive side and then 18 on the offensive side. So a little more slanted to the, to the defensive side, but still pretty balanced. Um, you know, felt like we went out and got some uh, some key guys that can fill in at spots that, you know, we had guys graduate because that's the name of the game in college. You can't have them, you know, last few years, it's you've had them maybe more five, six years, maybe even more than that, just because of what, what happened over the last several years with uh, in our whole world. Um, but, uh, so, but that's the name of the game. They graduate, so you got to find guys to replace them. And um, I felt like we did a good job as a as a staff um, during that whole transition and leading up to it. I mean, Coach Simple obviously still he was a huge part of that because um, I mean, most of those guys committed while he was still the head coach. And um, when we made the announcement, he and I both kind of all individually reached out um, to the guys, whether whether it was a phone call, text, um, you know, trying tried to get them on the phone. Um, I think I eventually talked to all of them on the phone, but I know we we tried that with the phone call or text and made sure we at least made contact and told them what was going on. And they were all still on board. And um, I think it's, you know, I'm real excited what we have. We got, you know, guys at different, you know, different spots, whether it's from the um, you know, defensive backside, we're adding in some numbers and some depth and some good players. Um, we, you know, last year we lost a few old linemen off the, um, you know, to graduation. Uh, and, you know, we got um, some really good old line recruits coming in that we feel are going to be have an impact potentially early. Um, but, you know, obviously it's, they, they're still going to be 18 year olds, 18 years old when they get here. So they still got to, you know, adjust and learn the playbook and whatnot. And, um, but you know, then we kind of, I felt like we had a good mix of, to fill our needs throughout the whole, whole class. That's for sure. And, you know, got some good, obviously having those local South Dakota kids are, are huge. Um, but we still, you know, at least we had, I think it's at least it's 12 States that we've had represented, represented. And then also a, we actually have an international player from Germany, um, uh, ben Albrecht. <laughs> so you saw my last name when we first started talking, like you had mentioned before. I'm like, he's like, that's a German last name, right? I'm like, yep, it is. All right. I, I feel good about that then. But, uh, but, you know, we had, as far as some of the more local guys, um, Gavin Pischke from West Central, um, O-Lineman for us, uh, really good. Um, 
you know, Gavin Cusera, another O lineman. Um, on the defensive side, uh, we got um, two Lennox boys, Dominic DeBeer and Tristan Butler. Um, you know, but from top to bottom, I felt like we did a really good job of filling our needs. You you've been with the program now for a couple of years anyway, and I, I would ask for the spring, especially. Did you have to make too many adjustments offensively and or defensively, or, or are you keeping along some of the same lines? So some of the the folks, the the players that are already there, have an idea of what the, you would expect of them. Uh yeah. From from the general standpoint, I mean, I said this when I when I first took over. You know. Coach, I I, I love working for Coach Simple so much when he was the head coach and obviously still is, you know, he's the AD because, you know, I felt like our values aligned and our beliefs. And so it made it real easy to work hard for him because of that, because we, you know, we, we believe the same things. And so from the general standpoint, you know, keeping kind of those same values just because it's stuff that I believe now, I'm going to kind of put my own little spin on it a little bit just because, in order for it to be authentic, I have to do that. So from those expectations standpoint and just the general sense of what's expected from the pro, like yeah, it was being a part of the program, that was for the most part the same. Um, offensively, um, you know, it's going to be essentially the same system. Um, we got to figure out what we do well um, and then highlight those. Um, you know, there's, you know, I can, we can draw up really, really good plays, but if our players – if that's not their skill set and if that's not what they are good at, then it's it's not going to be as effective. Um, and we kind of were working on a few things this this spring to highlight those um, those strengths from our players that are here. And then what we think we have coming in on the defensive side, um, there were a few adjustments. Uh, Coach Bessler is our defensive coordinator. He started back in January uh, before the transition. Um, he's taken over as a defensive coordinator. Um, you know, he he ran a little bit different system at the previous spot that he was at, um, but there are some still some similar aspects. So the guys were kind of we kind of melded those together um, and kind of learn. So guys learned some new things, but, um, you know, I think the guys are excited about it. Um, spring ball went went well. Um, you know, we <laughs> we pushed it back a little bit, expecting the spring to be a little bit like how it was last year. Um, uh, so we pushed it back and Easter being so early, we pushed it back uh, more in April. And I felt like we had a lot even nicer days in February and March than we did in all day, most of April. So that's the way it goes. But um, but we got our 15 practices in um, with one of those being our kind of spring scrimmage, which we had um, at our at Joe Q um, and, you know, had a had good attendance, um, you know, um, you know, I thought the guys competed that day um, and they did a good job. Some guys really kind of showed um, that they're ready to step in those roles of guys that left um, and just kind of continuing that forward. We're speaking now with Alex Kretschmar, who is the new head football coach for the Dakota Wesleyan Tigers. Coach, uh, to then carry on from what you said there at the end also, I'd, I'd like to preview a little bit. And, and talking about the offense, you know, a number of players and skill positions have moved on. As you mentioned, just that's just a part of it. Although I'm, you know, during some of the last two or three years, I know there were 25 year olds playing across the country. They just were. They've been around for so long. Um, one of those names in particular, Jamin Aaron. I mean, you you have a lot of at least stats from last year that are going to have to be replaced. Now I, I'm sure it does help you have at least three up your offensive line uh, that saw significant time last season that are coming back. But but we'll be seeing a lot of new faces there. That uh, you know, you're you're. Uh, radio crew is going to be calling some different names. Yep. Oh yeah, most definitely. Um, you know, we had you know, two two guys that were taking most of the reps during the spring. Um, uh, Kobe Kaiser and uh, Landon Iverson. Uh, Kobe, um, oddly enough, is actually from uh, Bridgewater, Emily Ethan, where Jamin was from. I think they are. They're actually they live across the street from each other. Um, <laughs> but uh, uh, yeah, he's you know he was a he. You know, this past year, it was basically kind of like, all right, if Jamin's, if Jamin can go, Jamin's going to go. Like, yeah, and then if he needs a, if he needs a breather, then, then Kobe's going in there. Um, so Kobe probably didn't get as many, as many reps as maybe he would have wanted. But, you know, obviously from the standpoint of when you got somebody like Jamin who can do, you know, he was a receiver out of the backfield for us. I mean, we even, you know, split him out. Um, you know, he, 
And then, you know, obviously running, running the football, um, became our all time leader um, in rushing this past year. So, I mean, there, there's some big shoes to fill, but you know, a guy like Kobe, who he's a little bit different running style than Jamin, um, you know, he can still make guys miss. Um, and it's very impressive when he does. Um, uh, cause it happens so quick. You're not, you're like, Oh man, like <laughs> he puts his foot in the ground and that guy keep, keeps going the other way and he, he changes direction. Um, so, but he's a little bit more of like kind of that more physical running back. He had some really nice runs for us last year. He had one big one. I think it was 30 yards against Mount Marty last year that kind of really, you know, continue that was in the second half really kind of propelled us can to continue to what we were doing there in that second half um, against that tough Mount Marty defense. Um, and, you know, and then Landon Iverson, he, he's coming on strong this spring. He did some good things last year, but I mean, when you got, Jamin Aaron, and then, you know, a guy that's a sophomore or redshirt freshman, that is, um, in his second year in Kobe, like, you know, sometimes it's hard to see those reps early on, but he kept working and did a great job for us all last year, playing some special teams and whatnot. And now, now this year, he's, he's really got a chance to, to kind of show is, you know, him and him and Kobe kind of being those two kind of main backs. And, you know, we, we feel we got some other guys on the, on the roster too, and coming in that can do some damage as well. Look over at the defensive side of the ball, and and Cale St Stevenson, Landon Rusink, a couple of defensive backs that are coming back among the leaders in tackles too. But they had a lot of picks and and interceptions to to their credit. Uh, Jaden Walton coming back, Grayson Hansen coming back as well to be a part of that defensive side. Yep. Oh yeah. Um, you know, from the the whether it's the second level when you have Grayson and uh, Jaden. Um, also, another guy, local guy, Joe Van Overshield, um, another good good uh, linebacker for us coming on strong last year and then had a really good spring um, in the secondary. You had, like you said, Cale Stevenson and um, Landon Rusink. Um, Landon, realistically, even though his freshman year back in 2022, he was, he was hurt for most of it. I mean, pretty much every game that he was able to play, he started in this last year, he started – every game. So he'll be going into his third year as like truly being a, a full-time starter, um, you know, for three seasons, even though maybe he missed a decent amount of games from injury his freshman year, but um, you know, and Kale come on strong, Kale, you know, very good in the back half. Um, you know, he does a really good job of coming up and being a run stopper as well. Um, from the first level uh, D line wise, uh, Cody Winslow um, came on strong as a sophomore, last year um i think red i guess technically redshirt freshman if i'm if I'm remembering correctly um but he was in his second year on campus and then uh um ethan mccune um another returner um he's going into his final year um i feel like he you know we got some experience at all three levels and then have some guys that are able to that have been on the roster and guys that are coming in, in this class that i think can definitely help um help definitely bolster that whole defense and continue what they're doing. Yeah, I know it's always tough to talk about uh, folks that you, that haven't had a college snap yet. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, you're just waiting to see how it turns out and, and even what they look like in fall. Uh, special teams in particular, I know Jackson Patrick is coming back as well, uh, was a solid kicker the first two years, called on a little bit more his sophomore year last season, and uh, he's uh, one of the players coming back for you for special teams. Mm -hmm. Yep. Oh, yeah. Jackson, I thought, did a great job of kind of developing from his freshman year in 2022 to his sophomore year last year. Um, you know, his leg strength increased, um, his consistency just with all of his mechanics and everything. I felt like he definitely took a step forward and hopefully he's like he'll continue that trend um, coming up into his third year. Um, you know, he's definitely he's a um, he's a fan favorite, as most kickers are on the on the. <laughs> football teams um as far as you know he's very popular amongst the guys like he um he's great kid works hard um you know and he's he definitely does a really good job of even though sometimes we're, we're maybe it's individual drills or you know when it's offensive defense he might be off doing his own own thing working on kicking and whatnot like he does a good job of still making sure he's his presence is known and being involved in everything like that 
Well, Coach, I know it's a little bit uh, far to be able to preview too much about the upcoming season, a little bit less than four months away, but I'm sure there are dates that are circling on your calendar, and obviously then your, your first time to be at, at, uh, in, in the position you are now. So we look ahead just a bit, and, and a couple of games that are probably big ones for the program. August 29th, it's a Thursday night. Uh, week zero, if you will, but uh, getting the football season going there. And you all are on the road taking on Dakota State, so an out-of-conference matchup that I'm sure has a lot of meaning. I mean, it's a little bit more than an hour separating the two programs, and, and I'm sure there's a lot in that. Great way to get the season kicked off. And then September 7th, which is the following Saturday, first home game, get to take on Mount Marty in what is uh, – there's a little marketing going on now. The Dakota Railway rivalry, not too much distance between the two schools. And, and the way I was reading that uh, when Mount Marty had football years and decades ago before the revival of the program, that uh, they just uh, get up a train, take the students from one place to the other on a Saturday to watch football games. So Dakota Railway rivalry, that first home game for you all. Yep. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, Both those dates are definitely circled on our um, calendar. Um, you know, um, you know, one guy we didn't mention um, earlier on um, from the offensive standpoint, Cole Holden, um, he had good games in both of those. So I'm sure, you know, they're going to both defenses on uh, um, both from both teams are going to be ready for him. And he's Cole's been doing a great job so far this uh, um, this spring. And, you know, but making that transition from kind of being you know, underclassmen now kind of coming into a leadership role. Um, you know, I know he's excited for those two games. The whole team, obviously myself, very excited, the whole whole community um, and the school as well. You know, it's getting to go um, to Madison uh, and go against, you know, Dakota State. They have a good program. We recruit a lot of the same guys um, and, you know, we're we're going after the same um, same guys here locally and all, all of South Dakota, that is. Um, and you know, I think it's a it's a really good good situation for us to get a chance to you know again play for the Commerce Cup, and then the next week right away it's going to be you know two emotion passion filled weeks right in a row, two rivalry games. Um, you know, it's it's been good having Mount Marty um, as that other kind of rivalry rivalry game for us. Um, you know, they run a very good program down there. Um, got a lot of respect. Uh, kind of fun fact, uh, Coach Micheletti and I actually ga together at St. Ambrose University. Um, so we, we know each other really well. John's probably been one of my closer friends in this business for a long, for, you know, we we started out coaching together and now now we're at this point where <laughs> we're coaching against each other. Um, so it's been, that's been fun. Um, you know, the text exchanges before the games, um, yeah. you know, the weeks, the le week leading up, you know, all civil and everything, but uh, <laughs> Yep. So it's Except for about three hours, right? Right. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. No. Yeah. But so that's kind of just, you know, added, added something, you know, a little diff different dynamic. Mainly it's probably for us two more than anybody else, but, um, but it's been awesome for, uh, you know, the whole, you know, Mitchell community and then Yankton community of kind of reviving that rivalry when it comes to football. It's always the rivalry still been there as far as DWU and Mount, Mount Marty, um, and all the other sports, uh, but it's, right. uh, but, you know, getting that football uh, rivalry back, it's been pretty good, but having two rivalry games right off the bat, it's going to be, I mean, those, you know, early in the season, you're still trying both, you know, both sides are still trying to figure out who they are as a team and whatnot. All they've really had is just, you know, fall camp and then maybe one game under their belt. It's, you know, those, those are going to reveal a lot of, you know, kind of who, who the teams are and, um, you know, who we are. And we're hoping that, you know, obviously it's a long way off still. Um, you know, it's kind of like you said, just under four months for, for those games, but um, still got a lot of work left to do. And kind of what we told the guys before they left, they just had, um, they had uh, finals this past week. Um, so this is our first week on campus with no students on campus. Um, uh, we told those guys before they left, like in our final end of the year meeting, like, hey, what you do on a day-to-day -day basis, you know, each day leading up to fall camp and then fall camp leading up to those, those first games is going to determine what, how those games come out. And, you know, if we talk about wins and losses, you know, that might be doing a disservice to, to the guys because what they need to focus on and what we talk about is, Hey, I'm going to focus on, you know, 
going to win right now that whatever it is that I'm doing, what's important now, kind of that old Lou Holtz saying of, <laughs> Hey, it's what's most important right now is what I'm doing. And whether it's this lift, whether it's, you know, watching some film, studying the playbook, you know, or for a lot of these guys, they're, they're working full-time jobs in the summer, but they're making the sacrifice to get themselves better each day. Um, so that, so that when we come to the fall, uh, we put ourselves in a good position to potentially earn the right to, to win on those Saturdays. I, I look forward to it. Those look like, and they look like good rivalry games too. And that's, that's one of those things too. I'm sure that it does nothing but help your program. And I, I guess the other two programs too, to have strong rivalries like that, to be able to recruit in in state, as you were talking about getting those South Dakota kids to come and play for you. So that, that would be a good thing, right? Oh yeah, most definitely. Yeah. It's, um, it's something that, you know, we talk a lot about in the recruiting, um, in the recruiting process, like as far as like, all right, hey, those are games that are attended very, very well. Um, you know, I think last year they were both, you know, the Dakota State one was just under 4,000 people. And same thing with the Mount Marty one, um, it was, you know, kind of that mid three, you know, 3,500 or 4,000, whatever, like give or take a few, I guess. But those are highly attended games to, you know, obviously the people in the communities, but then obviously the fans whether you're home or away are going to be traveling to those those games so those games are a lot of fun to coach in and unfortunately i never got the opportunity to play in them but i can imagine they're probably even yeah. more fun playing <laughs> and you know and coach I, I we didn't even get into the gpac portion of the schedule but that's that's uh scouting for another time we'll, we'll talk about that hopefully a little bit later coach alex kretschmar uh, new head coach for the Dakota Wesleyan Tigers. Coach, success to you all this season. We're going to follow the Tigers, obviously, August 29th when things get underway. But uh, have a great summer and look forward to uh, seeing good things from you all when fall camp comes around. Thank you so much for taking time with us today here on the Summit as well. All right. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. This was awesome.